Hi, it's Andrew Jenkins again and I'm here just down the road from uh, a local dealer of mine called Preston Caverns and Motorhomes. You've seen some other videos on here before that I've done with there. And it's their trade centre just a few miles down the road from the main branch. And I've come across this charming 1972 Sprite Alpine. Now this is had one owner from New apparently and he's now up for sale. But what I want to do is I'm going to sort of give you a bit of a rundown on the Sprite Alpine because believe it or not this is one of the UK's best selling caravan of that era and it cost around about £400 new. Consequently thousands of these were built but not so many survived today. And also I'm going to take you inside and I'm going to give a bit of a memory trip uh, because I remember these sadly when they were brand new and uh, going to see them at my local dealers. So I'm going to take you quickly around the caravan and just show you how this caravan has literally survived for 47 years when its life expectancy would be 10 to 15 years of age. So let's have a quick look around and uh, see if the Alpine has uh, changed much since it was new. Well here we are at the front end of the Tora, uh, this Sprite and the gas bottle locker and the actual drawbar shroud would definitely not have been a standard uh, fitting at that time. The chassis was made by CI Caravans who then owned Sprite and the uh, colour we've got here is, isn't anywhere really like the original colour, it's a beige but you'll see that later on in the video and I'll show you the, how the caravan would have looked when it was brand new. Um, but this was Britain's most popular caravan, uh, it's built for a family of four, this is the Alpine C, so basically it's a front dinette, single dinette, a rear dinette for double and centre washroom and wardrobe with kitchen opposite. Now let's have a quick look round the back uh, because of course after all these years people do tend to add their little bits and pieces and ideas on. Uh, unfortunately it's not always well, the best. as you can see, these are original lights and then someone's put this extra bit on here for some for no reason. The triangles would have been under here. These are the original grab handles and they're still stowed today as when the caravan was built back in 1972. Of course no double glazing was standard then and it was actual glazed glass windows. Plus as well the Sprite badge still is still there although the stickers have now come off. This top bit here was, was blue and these side panels were like a beige colour and um, it replaced the traditional Sprite green that had been used for many years from the 60s. But, you know, you think about it, this caravan was built probably in about a couple of hours maximum and it's lasted all this time. Um, the design is pretty simple, although the roof at the time was quite difficult to manufacture and had originated from CI's other pair, um, brand of caravans, Ettles, on their little Ettles GT308 uh, tour they produced. They actually used this roof design and um, when the Sprites were redesigned in 1970 they were looking at a boat roof style uh, roof which was the norm for lots of tourists that day but it was very expensive to make. So what they did, they adopted this design which gave the Sprite a very distinctive look it couldn't be copied easy, but it wasn't always very easy to produce. So for the first few years, or should I say the first 12 months, the actual design and production of these was not easy to accomplish. And they did suffer from a few leaks. But we're going to go now inside um, and see exactly what's happened in there and if it's changed much at all in the 47 years. Well, here I am into the Sprite. You've got to remember this caravan is 12 foot 6 long now. Back then, this was your standard family Torah, and you'd have thought nothing of buying this size of Torah to go behind just say, your 1.3 litre petrol Ford Cortina of the time. Now the thing is, the Sprite was very made down to a price. Um, it offered value, and that was done by um, CI buying in big uh, amounts of, of materials, big mass production methods, at the new market factory. They were churning something like 20 odd thousand plus sprites out a year. Um, 
1972 which was really possibly I would say the last of the golden era of, of caravan production uh, in the UK. From there on it steadily started to, to, to actually decline. There was a bit of a lift again in the late 70s, early 80s when it went down again and then we had a bit of a, uh, a run in the mid 80s when we had a couple of companies like Coachman that came along and also Van Royce. But anyway let's get back to 1972. Um, this is out of fridge obviously retrofitted. That was your little cutlery drawer, it didn't come out very well. Um, stainless steel sink in it which has been uh, retrofitted and also here you had your two burner fellows gas cooker and grill. Um, an oven wasn't standard of course but you could fit one in if you wanted to. These plastic catches were actually launched for the I think it was the 1970 or 69 uh, year and um, they were sort of seen as a, a real something sort of innovative at the time I and mean, you think they've lasted as long as they have. But you had at the back end here you got your uh, double lounge where the four of you seated would be seated. The table here is original uh, it's original leg but the last stone obviously has decided to put a different table in because that's not the original uh, finish at all. That would have gone down between the um, seat in here and that would have made up your double bed. Now as you can imagine back then this was only 12 and a half hundred weight unladen. Well it was, only, it was about 11, about 11.5 in old money. But everything here was built to keep costs down like all this was is all hardboard formed hardboard incredible same with the seat bases so this would have kept costs down because by 1972-73 prices inflation was starting to go up we had the VAT introduced to caravans from there on prices started to rocket on the uh, caravan market and um, caravans became rather expensive but quite a bit of room here I mean don't forget this van is only about six foot seven eight wide and there's plenty of, 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 of headroom here uh, I mean I'm not very tall I'm about five seven five eight but still quite quite a bit of headroom there was insulation, it was glass fibre insulated, the floor wasn't insulated back then. Of course we've still got the gas lights, they would remain for another 10 years. And there's no storage along here at all. Because people didn't take as much with them back there. But this is just how, basically I can fairly much remember it, except this would have been the same colours. And he's obviously decided to make it more modern at the time. But let's have a... A bit of a scan round and uh, just see basically what the Alpine looks as we we take it round with the camera now the thing was as well uh, there was no foot pump no water pump to the caravan sink in those days so that was a again an optional extra which meant you bought a, a Jupiter or a whale foot pump which obviously was in the floor this has been since fitted with a micro um, uh, switch uh, for, for the tap on there at some stage and there's been a light stuck under it. This would have literally been like a, a, an old car 12 volt lamp under there, 12 volt, which would have shed very little light. So let's have a bit of a look around and I'll just talk you through it as we go through and um, let's go into a bit of nostalgia. Well from the sink units here I stood by just before. Go around to the double lounge at the back. Now, as I said before, there's not much in the way of any storage, and the guys obviously who had this has added a radio in it, and he's actually put his own shelf up the top there as well on the top left. But normally, what you'd have got was the 
just the uh, overhead lockers at the back and they were sliding doors and you've got to remember that as I say this was a entry level caravan and um, they sold all over Europe they were so popular now if we have a look round this way to the wardrobe and now one of those catches of looks like it's given way there let's see what's what see what the wardrobe looks like oops out now hell fairness that's a sizable old wardrobe and um what I do like is the old NCC badge just at the top there just comes into frame but look you've got all these shelving at the side and that was a bit of a feature again at the time but look how simple it's all been made it's been you know it is quite simply constructed just a little bit of a timber frame and that's it and again I think we've got just board some description again this will be cost cutting to keep the cost down and keep it as good value for one as possible now there's no heater standard but you could retrofit a heater in and this one's been fitted and that's been in there a good few years and um, it's uh, you can probably see that's a bit of an awkward handle but there's a pipe there going to the from the fire to a little tap now a gas tap usually cost about four pounds extra to have fitted to a Sprite at the time and these days that wouldn't pass any safety regulations whatsoever uh, and quite rightly so but that again was the norm fluid heaters like your Carver heaters which became Trume of course uh, were very expensive the SP1800 had been around for five six years by that time but at the end of the day you know they were not cheap now we're going to go and have a quick look at the washroom and I say washroom it's not quite as you would expect right well <laughs> there's no cassette obviously that was a long long way off this is an original El San Lu I'm not going to even look at it <laughs> that could be tempting fate but this was the Alpine's washroom had a little hand basin there which wasn't supplied with any water you had to come and get your kettle and fill that up there's a bit of a mirror there there's a shelf been added there's so many bits and pieces of it's been added over the years but if you think about how small that room is <laughs> and yet that was considered perfectly the norm and people would never have flinched that at all that had been classed as basically perfectly fine but it just shows you how primitive it was but again this was a basic Torah but even on a more expensive Torah the washrooms were didn't come anything like toilets or anything like that you would have been looking to have a sink and if you got water fed to that sink via an electric pump which came in by the early about 73 74 way then you were sort of living in luxury as it were but it's just fascinating I just remember these so much and it is quite yeah amazing so back round you see but plenty of room in this middle here for for living space I'm quite impressed right we're going to go now to the bunk at the front or the single dinette which has been left made up as a single bed and I'm not going to mess around touching it actually right just forgive my flash gun there etc but this at the front would have been a single uh, seat dinette so table in the middle there of course and this would have been ideal for the children now it would have had a hammock bunk above which you could take out of course when you needed it and it would have had poles there but those seem to have gone probably when the kids have grown up because I say this but caravan has been owned by the same person for many years and they've been taken off it's a bit of a shelf up there but you know this was caravan in 1972 
and in those days it really was great because you could actually as children as a child myself I can remember just be able to shoot a fowl have my tea beans on toast whatever it was out and I'd soon find some mates to play around with we'd play football cricket whatever and it was a great time so it's it life was simpler right this seems so small now I mean obviously I've got bigger but it's, it, it, it does seem very small obviously this upholstery was completely different the carpet was different things have been added on as people do with houses and modernize it at the time but you know um, back then you know you didn't have electrics you didn't have TV or you could have had a television my Mum and Dad did with our, our camera, we used to have a little black and white TV version and for the power we used to have crocodile uh, clips and put it on the car battery. That's how primitive it was and if we were lucky to get a picture with a big metal, well aluminium pole that Dad used to have with an aerial tied to it, bolted to it should I say, uh, and usually stuck in something like a milk churn, I've, I've even known that today so we can get pictures to watch things like Dad's army. That was your entertainment, uh, playing cards, board games, that sort of thing. But the thing was, you could get out uh, as kids, play around on the site, a bit like you can do now, but I think kids today don't possibly see the, the joys of Cavern of, of, uh, of Cavern as probably I did when I was younger. It was a different time, of course. But looking back to the Sprite, well, these gave people many happy holiday memories. And the Sprite brand, as we know, is still going on through Swift Group. Uh, Sprite, of course, was originally uh, part of the CI Group, which was formed in 1963 when Sprite Ettles, because Sprite took over Ettles in 1960, when they merged with Bluebird Caravans in 1963, they basically formed what was the class as the biggest caravan organisation in the world. And that was no idle boast. It truly was. Uh, from that time, CI literally took on Europe as far out as New Zealand, South Africa and even into the States. They were a massive company. Sam Alper, who originated the Sprite Caravan back in 1950, although he was with his brother from 1947-48 with the Streamlight Rover Caravan Company, Alperson Products, he pioneered caravan manufacturer in the UK and not only that he actually pioneered the dealer system now it might seem unfair to say that when CI fell into liquidation back in 1982 that things went back but I think they generally did Sam Alper was a was a was a visionary he he looked ahead and having met him on several occasions and we talked about the industry and what he wished he'd done what he'd like to have done what he wanted to do was very very interesting because what Sam wanted to do was basically make the car industry like the car industry and what he did in 1973 he developed a situation where he actually had solar CI dealerships so they sold Sprite, Ettles, Europa and also Fairhome. Fairhome being uh, a Cardiff manufacturer that Sam Alper bought in 1965. Also Sam's CI Group bought the um, Wilk Stern German company as well uh, around the same time and um, had their factory over in Germany and uh, in fact Italy, Sweden, um, say the States, New Zealand, South Africa these are all the areas that Sprite had factories the CI Group now you think that's amazing, that's, they were one big massive company. And this is a legacy to Sam Alper because Sam, as I say, was very visionary. He wanted this thing where he had a solar dealership so you could have gone in and you could tea dealer and if you wanted a spray of paint for your 10 year old Sprite to touch it up, there they were on the shelves and he got them or they could order the part for you. They then put it on microfilm which was like the forerunner of a computerised system if you like. And basically what they could do was they'd get everything out of part numbers. And um, Sprite were, CI caravans with Sprite etc. 
were definitely the leaders, and it didn't and it didn't matter just in the UK because the CI dealers out in 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 Europe were also geared up for uh, spares backup. And also, you got to remember is that Sprite actually all the CI caravans actually were built on CI's own chassis, their own suspension system they designed, and they actually built the chassis and the suspension system themselves. And they also had their own plastic manufacturing company uh, uh, at the new market site. So things like the skylights and that were all made by CI Group. But they were the leaders. And as we know, staying the lead isn't always an easy task because you've always got somebody biting at you. So consequently, by the late 70s, the market had taken a massive downfall. We lost big com companies such as Astral Caravans and Thompson Caravans. Those people went, and by 1982, the CI group crashed. Big shame. Sam Alpha wanted to go in and try and get it all back up and running, but nobody was on any of it at all. And uh, the CI group was reformed, everything was sold off. It was a smaller company, and it went on for some years. And then it became uh, Sprite Leisure in around about 1993. And by 1994-95, Sprite Leisure were no more. And the Swift Group brought the Sprite Ettles, Europa and the Ferrum uh, names. And, um, well, the rest of this is history. The new market factory was shut down, all, all sold off. It covered around about 45 to 50 acres, the new market factory. I've actually been around there. If you've read my book, The Story of Sprite, it tells you all about how that factory evolved and its production techniques. It was very interesting and employed just about everybody in new market and, and around, actually. So when I see something like this, you know, it really just thinks, you know, they had the right idea. This was a, a modern tour of its day. A Sprite Alpine Sea. They made the one with the toilets at the corner from them, but this was a more popular layout. And this put many, many people, not just here in the UK, but people abroad, on the road to caravanning. Not just for one family, for a generation, but for several generations. And the Sprite brand is still a strong name. And people still come on to me from the States with Sprites built in the very early 70s that were exported there. Um, back in the late 60s from the new market and then also the ones that were built out there um, in the States they're still around and that's fantastic and that's a legacy to Sam Alper who sadly died um, back in around about 2002 but all the joy he gave to people right now I've gone on long enough you're going to see some shots now after this of what the Sprite would have looked like when it was new and um, also the Sprite book, the story of Sprite, is still available. Um, it's through Veloci Publishing or mainly you can get it off Amazon. And second hand book detailers as well if you don't want to buy new. But I'm just going to sign off while I waddle in a little bit of nostalgia. And think about these when I was a child coming in and looking at these for the first time when they landed on the dealer's forecourt in 1971 in September. And looking with my parents... Um, and just being fascinated that these caravans were so popular and they mass produced them and made so many of them. Right, I'm going to go and uh, I'll speak to you soon. I'll be back with some new caravan tests and some used caravan tests. But at the moment, I'm going to go back to 1972 and when Glam Rock was king. Yeah, and yeah, I'd listen to me transistor radio to the top. 20 or whatever it was on the Sunday evening. Right, I'm signing off. Bye for now. Please feel free to comment and also to like my YouTube website. Thank you very much. Bye.